Good evening and welcome to Northern Italy for round four of the Crest Auto Sport and Next Gen Racing Euro TCR Championship on Race Room. It's the 8th of June today and we're here at Imola, the Autodromo Internazionale Enzo Adino Ferrari. These championships proudly sponsored and affiliated with lovely stickers, Power Max Racing, Track Racer UK, Fastar, Joyce Design and 603 Autosport. And as we mentioned tonight, we're at Imola in Emilia Romagna. 350 kilometers north of the capital of Rome and 40 kilometers southeast of Bologna. This is the Grand Prix layout we are driving tonight, which uh, has been the layout of Imola since 2008, for 2008, there was a chicane on the, what is now the start and finish stretch. And since 1994 and 1995, the circuit has been very much this shape, except before then, the first two chicanes of Tamburello and Villeneuve were just flat out sections. Unfortunately, this track is engraved in our memories as a very unfortunate day in motorsport where we saw the death of Roland Ratzenberger and Ayrton Senna but its legacy lives on and they remember those drivers and still this track is a beautiful location for racing and we remember those legendary drivers. Tonight Imola the Grand Prix layout is three miles long or 4.9 kilometers if that's your measurement system on race room, this track costs £4.29 to buy and it has 20 turns, 8 to the right and 12 to the left. And over the years, it has hosted the Race of Italy in 2000 and... It's, yeah, definitely 2009. I thought I was wrong there. 2009, where actually it was won by Gabriele Tarquini, the Italian driver so famous with touring cars across the world. And Ivan Muller won the other race of that race. 29 Formula 1 races it has hosted over the years every year in various different names the San Marino Grand Prix, the European Grand Prix, the Italian Grand Prix and all sorts 1980 to 2006 and then it was deleted from the F1 calendar as it did not really suit the F1 cars at that time but it returned recently for this year's round 2 of the championship and last year it hosted the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix but tonight, this is the Euro TCR League, hosted by Crest Autosport in alliance with Next Gen Racing. All TCR categories that Race Room have is hosted in this championship. There's more than 90 cars available to choose from. 90 liveries, should I say, and there's 11 different manufacturers. Portimao was round one all them weeks ago on the 18th of May, and it followed with Aragon in Spain. Paul Ricard followed, which was last week's round, and a thrilling round it was. In fact, one of my most favourite events I've ever commentated. So do go and watch it on the Crest Autosport channels if you have a spare two hours. But Imola is today, and hopefully some equally great racing in store for us. Next week, we're off to Hungary for the Hungara Ring track. Very famous with Formula 1, that track, and of course is hosted the opening round of the WTCR in many different seasons. Round 6 is in two weeks' time, and it's at the Autodrom Moss circuit, not the most popular track in Czechia. In fact, Autodrom Brno is the most popular track in Czech Republic, which is now released on race... well, soon to be released on race room, should I say, and we can't wait for that. But Moss will host our Czechia round of the championship. We'll have a week off after round 6, and we'll be back for round 7, and we're in the United Kingdom for the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit on the 6th of July, two days before my birthday, which is cool. And then on the 13th of July, one of my favorite tracks ever, and probably most people's favorite tracks, Spa-Francorchamps in Belgium takes place for round eight. Round nine will be the Zandvoort circuit in the Netherlands, followed by round 10, we're up in Scandinavia for the Scandinavian Raceway, AKA Anderstorp in Sweden. Round 11 will be the Red Bull Ring in Austria, and round 12 will finish off in Germany for the Hockenheim Ring. You can still get involved in this series by going to crestautosport.com to sign up and get more info about the league itself. And of course you can join either of the two organisations' Facebook groups. Search Crest Autosport Race Room Leagues to find the main group for all communications for this league, or you can join the Next Gen Racing League for access to this league and access to many other leagues as well. 
nice cars. There are 11 up for choice for the drivers. We won't see all of these manufacturers, as not all of them have been chosen, but these are the ones that are available. The Audi RS3 is driven by a few drivers, as is the Alfa Romeo Giulietta. The Honda Civic is in the field, as well as the Lincoln Co. and the Renault Megane. The Volkswagen Golf features, as well as the Hyundai i30. Unfortunately, we don't see the Peugeot 308 or the Lada Vesta, but we do see plenty of the Cooper TCR in this series as well. And another car that has been added to the TCR roster of race room is the Opel Astra, but we don't get to see that out in the field today. Maybe another time. And tonight's itinerary. We're in practice at the moment. Qualifying will start in just under four minutes time on 8 o'clock UK time, GMT plus one. Qualifying obviously sets the grid for race one, which will be a 15 minute race. Race two will follow immedi almost immediately after race one, and the grid for that will be based on the race one results, but the top eight reversed. So if you finish eighth in race one, you start pole for race two. If you finish first in race one, you start eighth in race two. Race three, after a quick intermission, will feature the final race of the night, a 25 minute race, where the grids will be based on the results of race two, but the top 15 reverse. Nearly all the grid will be reversed and ballast will be adjusted as well, which will go over very, very shortly. So we now have cars in action in our view. And we'll do a little bit more housekeeping before we get underway. We're currently looking at uh, Alex Ward going around the track. 20 drivers expected to be taking part tonight. But as we're in round four of the championship, it is quite important to take note of the championship status coming into tonight. But last week at Paul Ricard, these were the results. Jonas Lienberg went pole position to win the race. A big battle between him and Eamon Akeem and Ian Deeney and Lee Horn. <laughs> Plenty of drivers battling at the front of Paul Ricard last week. It was a great race to watch. But Jonas Lienberg took his opening win of the season. Uh, in the Hyundai i30. In race two, Ian Dini took his first win of the season in the Alfa Romeo Giulietta, finishing just ahead of his teammate Stefan Heiker Navalov and Yunus Khabib, taking third place in his first podium of the season. And then in race three, Fraser Rostens, believe it or not, took his first win of the season in the Audi RS3. Eamon Akeem charging up the field to finish second place. And Heike Navalo coming from 14th on the grid to finish third. A brilliant night for Navalo. And our driver of the day that day, it probably could have been Navalo thinking about it, but our driver of the day that day was Ian Dini. Stellar driving from him that night finishing third, first and fifth on the night. So they were the results of last week's race at Paul Ricard and this is what it did to the championship. Now Eamon Akeem did come out with 302 points however he got a penalty for uh, contact with someone out on the track in one of the races but 300 points still keeps him in the lead of the championship but only 10 points ahead of Jonas Lienberg who took his maiden win of the season last week. He is in second, and he is 13 points ahead of Lee Horn, the co-host of this championship. Stefan Heikir Navalov in fourth place, nice and consistent driving from him this season, and he's followed by Jeff Perkis, another consistent flying driver. Ollie Anson in sixth with Ian Dini, race winner last week in seventh place. Eunice Khabib in eighth with Fraser Rostens and Jamie Dory rounding out the top ten. And the championship standings also determine the ballast of this championships uh, of these races. So going into race one and race two, and of course qualifying, you will carry X amount of ballast based on your championship positions. So only the top ten carry ballast, and it is running down from 40 in increments of four. So Eamon Akeem leads the championship. He's on 40 kilos. The ballast will change for the final race, race three tonight, where the ballast will be based on your qualifying position so if you qualify on pole in the qualifying session starting in two seconds time you will carry 40 kilos of ballast for race three and we're about to ascend into qualifying where the drivers will blast out for 15 minutes to fight for that front spot on the grid there's a long run down to turn one of Tamborello on this track so qualifying on pole is crucial and gaining your position early on at the start of the race 
is crucial so you want to be as far up as you can Eamon Hakeem will leave the pits in the Alfa Romeo there and the number 31 Alfa our championship leader a C's updated his team back to Bollers Esports which is good to see Blue Steel Racing as well Eamon Hakeem will lead various drivers out onto the track he's followed by Oli Janssen and a new driver to the field today we have Darren Ivan Rayan of Singapore welcome to him he seems to be teammates with Eamon Hakeem as he's riding with the Blue Steel Racing team name and also the same livery so there's two Alfa Romeo 2019 cars with the Molzane Italian style livery at its home race today shouldn't forget that oh and there's a spin back there that looked like Jeff Perkis getting it all wrong back there can't quite find him and he resets the pit so Oli Janssen going very slow through Villeneuve there and it seemed to cause a bit of confusion to the drivers behind we were seeing there is another driver running wide at the back there couldn't quite catch who that was oh it's Ben Payne running wide in the background there so a lot of drivers struggling with the cold tyres on this track rear tyres well they don't actually heat up at all in these cars. There's uh, something to mention about these uh, tyres as Ben Payne sits back to the pits. We look back to Eamon Hakim. And another new driver for tonight, Alexander Foyle. Not a new driver to Crest All Sport. He's one of our um, homegrown drivers in the Lincoln Co. One of his favourite cars in Crest Colours. Good boy. But, uh, yeah, welcome back to Alex Foyle to the Crest All Sport Race Room Leagues. He was a star player should we say in the DTM league he won many races and did very well in the championship Eamon Hakim our championship leader is going to take us on a lap of Imola this is the tour of the track we come down the start finish straight past what was the Variante Bassa now no longer on this layout runs down the start finish straight now and now it will turn to the left as we approach the Tamburello chicane breaking just after the wall ends on the right there into turn one we go third gear across the curbs as much as you can without invalidating your lap good run so far from Eamon Hakim out of Tamburello he goes and he approaches the Villeneuve chicane left first down the gears taking it very steady because the rear end can give in so easily there's a lot of dust on the track the car in front might have been causing a little bit of dust and gravel on the track as we go through the Tosa hairpin now nice late apex from Eamon Akeem there as we go up the hill which will come up towards the Peri uh, the Piratella over the crest slight downhill braking into a corner that slowly descends into a downward descent and now we come into the Acque Minerale right first and then an even tighter right here almost second or third gear you can take through that corner as we come up the hill it flattens out as we will now approach the Variante outer another chicane with high curbs here taking plenty of it on the inside there purple sector so far late on the throttle there was Eamon Akeem that might have not been the ideal route through the chicane there as we now come down the hill into the Ravazza section two left handers in third gear braking now he passed the 100 board on the right there taking plenty of the curb don't go out too far to the right as the gravel trap out there that will slowly down he misses the apex of the second Ravazza corner there but that is a lap of the beautiful circuit of Imola on board with our championship leader Eamon Hakim he'll come across the line first lap time on the board in fact comes from Eamon Hakim a 153.2 now we have been seeing low four, uh, 52s and speaking of 52s our new driver Ivan Rehan goes into the 52s in provisional pole position at the moment we will see better times than that as the session goes by Jürgen Matsby Pedersen crosses the line seven tenths off top spot Ian Dini race two winner last week takes third at the moment Ben Payne after the messy opening lap goes into sixth Alex Foyle Welcome back to the championship for him. Fifth at the moment with Georgiadis taking seventh at the moment. Mark Arrowsmith behind him. Missed last week. Welcome back to him in the only Honda in the field. He is uh, hasn't set a time yet. Fair few drivers haven't. Lee Horn being one of them. But a purple first sector on his way round. See if he can get himself to the top. 
Ike Navalov takes third place in the Alfa Romeo, the 69 car driven last year by Jean-Carl Vernet. As he comes across the Tambra of Chicane, Navalov was one of the star drivers last week. As we mentioned earlier, Plummer and Nystrom have set times to go eighth and ninth. No time from, uh, yes, there is a time from Jeff Perkins at the moment. 12 seconds off the pace, so might have backed off on that lap. Gabriel Lopez has also put himself on the board. The 22 Cooper back there, a mangled front end on that car. Now there's two 22 Coopers out there as what we were going to run was a team's championship where people drive the same liveries. So we'll release the 22 Cooper here to be available twice, which both of these drivers taking. It's a very nice livery, in fact, even with a mangled front end like what Lopez has. Alexander Jakobsen into second place and even better Lee Horn puts himself into first with Eamon Akeem pipping him just behind there to go into provisional pole with a 52.5 Oli Hansen sets his first time of the night to put himself sick and Jürgen Madsby Pedersen a good night in store for him maybe fifth place got a bit unlucky last week caught up in a few instants here and there and did not have quite the meeting he wanted. Car skipping across the curbs very, very difficultly uh, through the Tamborello there. Mark Arrowsmith puts himself on the board in 11th place at the moment. Not bad from him. Yet to get his season proper kicked off at the moment. He had a difficult night at Portimao round one and round two was a bit better, but not many results to the extent of what 11th looks like to him right now very good showing so far a couple of drivers yet to get times on the board Jonas Leenberg is one of them there he is right behind Mark Arrowsmith and the car off in the background there was Anastasios Georgiadis he joins the track dragging a bit of gravel onto the track Alex Ward goes 13th at the moment in the other 22 Vextra Cupra but still at the moment it's Eamon Akeem top of the pops right now and he's not going any quicker on this lap but he might be gearing up for another Eunice Khabib was one of the star players at Portimao weeks ago hasn't had quite as many good nights he was pretty good last week in fact with a third place in race three so he's a bit hit or miss bit of a dark horse at the moment is Eunice Khabib but he's in the top ten in the championship with eighth so we're seeing plenty of him. Plenty entertaining races. Lee Horn, Pips, Eamon Akeem. Two pole position at the moment with a 52.4. This is a man who is, in his words, disappointed with his season start. He's only 23 points off top spot in the championship at the moment. Third place for him in the championship. Pole position provisionally at the moment in qualifying. A good showing so far from Alexander Jakobsen. Fourth place for him and fellow Scandinavian driver in the Renault, Jürgen Masby Pedersen. So the Renault might not be a bad car to have here, as will the Link. As, uh, sorry, the Link and Co, should I call it? It's Volvo, basically. Alex Vohl puts himself seventh place. And I've seen him do better times than that, so there's plenty in the bag for Alex Foyle. Let's see what he can do. Eamon Akeem, what response has he got to Lee Horn pipping him to the top of the standings? Well, it's a purple first sector as he goes around uh, the Piratella and into the Aqua Minerale now. Let's see if sector two can get himself any better at the moment. Oh, and I think uh, Jakobsen did say he reset to the pits. You're right in that. So a purple sector for Eamon McKean there, but also a purple sector, two purple sectors for Lee Horn. Two also for Eamon Akeem, so this could be real close between the two drivers right now. So a 114.612. And for Lee Horn, oh, the same time. Oh, this could be very close between the two drivers. As I think Navalov just put himself into eighth place. Eighth place is a very good place to be. I believe Navalov got the reverse grid pole last week. So let's see if Lee Horn can get himself any quicker. And for, well, not further up the standings, but further ahead of his competitors it's another purple it's a 52.3 it says at the bottom point one and that's not quite correct but Eamon Akeem will go even quicker nearly a tenth quicker 152.254 it is a 
royal battle between these two at the moment. A tenth between them with five minutes to go in the session. They both leave the pits at exactly the same time. They were both out on the same section of the track on the, that last stint. And with five minutes to go, they'll get one flying lap. Will that be enough? I'm not... Too, well, uh, two, maybe one? No, I think they'll only manage to get one in. So that might be it unless they can conjure up a miracle because the tyres don't quite get warmed up for a couple of laps in these cars nowadays as Jonas Lindberg finally puts a time on the board he was pole position last week at Paul Ricard and he won race one ninth at the moment for him below par for his standards certainly by this season and he just about getting by and I think that's Alex Ward behind him now as Going into fifth place has gone Heike Navalov there. Showing what he's made of. Fifth place is a good start for him. Eamon Akeem and Lee Horn rushing around the track to try and get themselves another lap in. Jeff Perkis a bit disappointed for him so far, but he'll cross the line now to go a little bit quicker. He puts himself into 13th. This is not quite Jeff Perkis's usual standards as at the back there in the 69 car. That's Navalov letting him go. Jeff Perkis will have one more opportunity because on this circuit sorry not on this circuit on this sim unlike other sims once the timer goes to zero that is it your session is over you cannot complete your lap if you are on one already you could say it's harsh you could say well if you want to get your time in you have to get it in the 20 minute sorry 15 minute window Either way, that's what Race Room does. Elliot House, no time set for him yet. In the one of my favourite liveries of the field, the black and yellow come to you Audi Sport Audi. Driven by Magnus last season, I think he's driving it again this season. Eamon Akeem will start another lap here. Currently pole position. That's Lee Horn, not too far behind. And Lee Horn will need a big lap here. He's got the slipstream of his championship rival ahead. We'll be helping him along some amount. This is a bit of a shuffle back here for position. I think that was Oli Janssen getting into... No, it wasn't. Uh, I thought I saw a shuffle of position. It might have been... Ah, it was. It was Jonas Lindberg getting himself into eighth. But he'll reset to the pits and that'll be it for him. So pole position last week, eighth this time. Ian Deeney has also come to the pits. Lee Horn has also aborted lap and come to the pits. So that means Eamon Akeem is probably as good as safe right now. And the two of them are more than half a second clear of everyone else. Their closest competitor is Darren Ivan Rahan, who will be able to complete this lap. But he's getting towards the point in the session now where drivers will not be able to complete their lap. Oh, as Jeff Perkis puts himself into 11th, he resets to the pits. Most drivers have set to the pits now. Pedersen, Eamon Akeem has. Lindbergh, Navalov, Pedersen. Drivers still going. Ryan is one of them, but it doesn't look like he's on a particularly good lap. Pedersen will not be able to complete this lap. Oh, sorry, that's Jakob, sorry. He won't, Jakobsen, sorry. He won't be able to complete this lap. Oli Janssen invalidated laps so it certainly looked like Eamon Akeem has picked up another pole position didn't get one last week oh and Mark Arrowsmith on a slightly better lap than what he had last time for his PB might he get himself further up than 13th let's keep an eye on the Brit in the Honda goes down to 14th with Eunice Khabib putting himself into 13th at the moment Marks Arrowsmith will come around the final corner with a minute go into the session. Not many drivers will complete laps now. Arrowsmith in the all call liveried. Honda Civic crosses the line. Green splits. Doesn't go quicker. Stays 14th at the moment. Petter Nystrom might just about complete this lap. And while he gets through sector two... It is green all round. Might he be able to improve his time? He might actually do that. He could jump up a fair few positions if he has a good final sector here. We'll come back to him very shortly. Anastasios Georgiadis won't be able to complete this lap. Not round enough of the lap. Neither will Roy Plummer. Elliot House will stay. Will go to 18th with one time on the board. Now Petter Nystrom. He might not be able to get to the line in time, in fact. As the... 
Standings come up for us rather quickly. Pan Eastern will cross the line and doesn't he abort his lap. But they are our championship, our qualifying results for round four of the championship. Eamon Akeem will qualify on pole position and it means all night he's going to be carrying 40 kilos of ballast as the ballast for race three is determined by your qualifying position. We will get those back up for you very quickly. That's just what Race Room does to us. I say it on every live stream, I know, but that is what Race Room does to us. It gets rid of the uh, session results rather quickly. So Eamon Akeem on pole position with Lee Horn in second place. New driver tonight, Darren Ivan Rahan, will start on third position. Alongside him will be Alexander Jakobsen and I believe that is Jakobsen's best qualifying performance of the season. Yes it is. His best until today was eighth so fourth. Very good going for him. 19th in the championship so might he be able to kick start or restart his championship points bid. We'll find out. Heike Navalov in fifth position with Jürgen Masby Patterson. A very good qualifying for him. In fact, his best of the season so far. He's qualified ninth in every race until today. Sixth for him. He's just turned the number upside down. That's basically what he's done. Oli Hansen in seventh place and Jonas Nienberg in eighth place. But eighth place is a very good position to be in as reverse grid pole is if you finish eighth in the first race. Alex Foyle, welcome back to him, to the race room leagues. Ninth for him in qualifying with Ian Deeney alongside him in the Alfa Romeo. Jeff Perkis in 11th with Ben Payne taking 12th on the grid. 13th taken by Eunice Carbide and Mark Arrowsmith in 14th. Alex Ward in 15th with Petter Nystrom in 16th. Anastasios Georgiadis in 17th with Elliot House in the dying moments of qualifying took 18th. Roy Plummer and Gabriel Lopez will take up the back row of the grid. I was getting a little bit of a warm-up before things get underway here at Imola. And the general consensus has been this season that the drivers that have started on pole position have gone on to win race one. Eamon Akeem done it twice, one at Portimao, one at Aragon. And Jonas Lindbergh did it last week. He was made to work hard for it, but he did it last week nonetheless at Paul Ricard. All records must be broken. Most things do come to an end at some point, so we might might we see someone else on the, that top spot in this race. Not sure. It's going to be very difficult to beat Eamon Akeem as he's our championship leader and has won five races. Uh, sorry, four races so far this season. But we're about to get underway for the Euro TCR round four at Imola in Italy. Hosted by Crest Autosport in alliance with Next Gen Racing. My name's Alex Everett and welcome to Imola. And we are all on the grid, ready to get underway. 20 cars on the grid for first race of the night. Away we go and everyone gets away. Relatively clean at the moment. No one swerving across to the fence just yet. Eamon Akeem and Lee Horn side by side as they run down towards Tamarello. And coming out to the outside there is Alexander Jakobsen in the Renault. He might have a good running on the Alpha on his inside of Rehan. Into Tamarello we go. Jakobsen does move into third place. Eamon Akeem and Lee Horn stay where they are at the moment. And we've still got the chase cam shenanigans of R3 Reality, our streaming software. Well, yeah. Yeah, some things never end. Everyone getting through relatively safely. Let's just make sure that everyone gets through the Villeneuve chicane sound. No, they don't. In fact, Alex Ward has gone off there at the background there, and he'll drop to 20th position. This is on board with Alexander Jakobsen. Fairly close <coughs> to Lee Horn, who has dropped off a little bit from Eamon Akeem, who's just flying away at the moment a nice move back there by Jonas Lienberg on Heike Navalov up two places already is the Swedish driver as he moves past his fellow Swedish driver of Heike Navalov coming into the Aqua Minerale what a big lunge there from Elliot House on Ben Payne get some good camera angles here so able to monitor most of the action for most of the corners particularly in these early parts of the race is Jeff Perkis in 10th place here He's moved up a few, fair few positions at the start here. I think he qualified 12th or 13th, one of them, but he's up to 10th at the moment. 
Amin Hakim leads the way though as he comes into the final section of the track a second clear or set more than a second clear over Lee Horn who will not be impressed with that first lap on himself he needs to hunt down that man in front he is his championship rival Amin Hakim good start to this race though doing what he's done most of the season leading and getting far out in front Jakobsen in third place we haven't seen much from him yet this season but this is so far pretty good showing from the Swedish driver of Taz Mirren Racing. And another Renault driver doing particularly well at the start of this race. Jürgen Masby Pedersen into fifth place. And a slow down penalty for Alex Foyle in eighth place there. Following Navalov close behind. And Oli Janssen's back there. Will be threatening that reverse grid place. Remember finishing eighth gets you pole position for race two. A lot of slow down penalties back here as Mark Arrowsmith oh and he spins it he just lost rear, uh, the end, control of the rear end there and ends up in the wall and that might be race over for him engine damaged it certainly looks like it though he'll keep it going granted with a mangled uh, front end and that is a bad start of the night for Mark Arrowsmith and qualifying was looking real promising for him Lindbergh our race one winner good start to this race so far jumping up from 8th to 6th so far and it's not a bad lap so far from Lee Horn who's gained on Eamon Akeem just a little bit a tenth or two on this lap so far he has shaken off the threat from Jakobsen ever so slightly four way battle back here Navalov in the middle of them Lindbergh in front of him and Alex Four behind run down to the Ravatsa to end lap two and the corner we go Jonas Lindbergh taking plenty of that curb to try and maximise his run on the cars ahead to try and catch them up down the main straight let's take a look back here it's a bit of a battle the two Audis going heel and toe that is Eunice Carbid and Jeff Perkis. Jeff Perkis looking to the outside of the fellow Audi driver. He has the outside. Eunice Carbid giving room at the moment. Moves across in the braking zone a little bit. Jeff Perkis had to break a little sharper just to stay out of the rear bumper of Carbid. Ian Dini not the greatest of starts for him if I just remind myself where he started. Uh, tenth place, down two places at the moment best of starts for Ian Dini Elliot House a good start for him 18th to 13th at the moment Let's see if he can get up a few more positions ah chase cam <laughs> Alex Paul real close to that Alfa Romeo ahead Jonas Nienberg a slow down there might have been running too wide coming through the top end there through the Piratella a lot of brake smoke going up, going into the Aqua Minerale there. Plenty of slowdowns being dished out in this race. A lot of them can be served fairly quickly, but as we look up there, Alexander Jakobsen, who got in front of Ivan Rayan at the start of the race, the very first stretch, under a bit of threat from the Alfa Romeo driver now. Let's go down into. That's uh, the Renault's really going well here. Third and fifth at the moment. Only two Renault drivers in the field. And they're waving the flag at the moment. As we see Darren Ivan Rehan up the inside, and he successfully has the inside. Will he be able to break late enough for the corner? Can Jakobsen hang on to it? Jakobsen broke much later and will retain third for the moment. It was a bit of a scruffy entry into the corner for Rayan himself. Going down that shallow entry into the corner is very difficult at Tamarello as you've got to swap directions. As we see Jonas Lindbergh looking all over the rear of Jürgen Masby Pedersen here. Come into Toza now. Pedersen hangs on to fifth all over the rear of that Alfa Romeo take a 
a look to the inside. And Jakobsen has broken away from the Alfa a little bit. Breaking later into the Tamborello, getting the better line through the corner certainly did benefit Jakobsen. Oh, as Rayan moves a little bit wide as we just see ahead of us there. But it's not enough for Jakobsen to, uh, sorry, Pedersen to gain and get alongside. He is equally under threat from Lindbergh as he is putting the threat on Rayan. So they come through the Fariante Anta now. Down towards the Ravazza they go again for the fourth time. Meanwhile, back at the front, Eamon Hakim still leads and has extended his lead to two seconds over Lee Horn. And a further 2.8 seconds ahead of Alexander Jakobsen. But Rayan is under trouble now. Jurgen Masby Pedersen is looking alongside and even Jonas Lindbergh is looking very, very tasty for that fourth place as he's got a better run and he's able to swap over to the inside getting past Pedersen on the slipstream he has the inside for Tamborello he breaks later than Rayan and he moves into third place good move there from Lindbergh getting into fourth position in a matter of a straight and one corner brilliant stuff from him there Pedersen flashing his lights trying to put off the Singapore driver in front of him is it going to work though on a big cut of the curb there he takes a little bit of the gravel does Pedersen that'll slow him down to the incoming Navalov behind back there the bow for eighth place is on that's foil up the inside of Oli Janssen the two Lincoln co-drivers going head to head and still held on to eighth at the moment is Oli Janssen we've unfortunately missed that move from him to take eighth place from the Brits very strange we have the Brit in the non-British car and we have the <laughs> non-Brit in the British driver's car it's very difficult to tell them apart at the moment but Oli Hansen's car carrying the Swedish colours as well so one of the reasons why he's probably picked that car a good battle this Jakobsen is moving away in third place and Jonas Lindberg might start to break away from Rehan who is struggling let's just say a third place start and he's dropped the fifth at the moment he's under big threat from the Renault behind of Pedersen as Pedersen moves to the inside I think we got a bit of latency from Rayhan there as uh, one minute he wasn't alongside and the next he was and he's now losing another position to Navlov it was a good move from Pedersen to get the inside Rayhan is really struggling he is now under threat from the two Linkercos coming from behind Oli Hansen is defending from Alex Fall and equally can see the opportunity ahead of him to get past Rayhan. Started third, down to seventh. Looking to the outside is Alex Fall as he makes his way past Oli Hansen into eighth place. And now he'll make a move on Rayhan and a big swipe at the rear left quarter, rear right quarter panel there. He was very lucky not to have taken him out there, was Alex Fall but he stays eighth at the moment, still behind the Singapore driver. Oh, and a big hit of the kerb. He went on two wheels there. Brilliant theatrics from Alex Foyle and stays on all fours. Come around Tozer now. It's split up a little bit amongst fourth to sixth. Keep a close tab on Alex Foyle. He's getting ever closer to Rayhan. Rayhan really struggling in the race here. Seems he had very good qualifying pace, but the race pace is letting him down just a little bit. A little bit flustered on the last few laps has lost him a few positions but he's now got to get his head down and defend hard ahead of Alex Ball here as he runs wide coming through the Aqua Minerali that will certainly give him a slowdown he'll need to serve Alex Ball might recognize that and know that he'll be able to take the position at some point Rayan hasn't slow, uh, served the slowdown just yet he runs wide again another that would be an accumulated penalty don't think he served it yet he needs to he'll get a drive through penalty if he doesn't serve within a certain time next four might be a little bit confused as to why Ryan hasn't slowed down I'm sure we'll find out soon enough if he will Elliot House also with the slow down penalty the most of them do happen the Aqua Minerali there as it did for Mark Arrowsmith who despite that um, lap one or two I think it was two spin he is catching up with Gabriel Lopez. Might be able to get a few.
you extra points. You get points for every position in uh, this championship. On a big lock up that breaks ahead from Navalov, I think. It's safe and sound for the moment. Drive-through penalty for Darren Ivan Rehan, not serving the slowdown penalty we thought right, and he'll have to go through the pits. And what was looking like a good debut for him is looking like a night he'll be charging back through. He'll have to charge back through the field for the remainder races as Alex Fall will go by into seventh place. And Oli Anson will inherit eighth place when Rehan presumably goes into the pits. Two and a half minutes to go, so there will be about two more laps. This one and the next one, the final lap to go. Are the battles on track. Elliot House and Ben Payne going at it again. They had a big battle in race three at Paul Ricard last time out. And Elliot House running very slow coming out of Toza there. Under threat from Gabriel Lopez, who moves into 18th place. Mark Arrowsmith back there catching up on this gang of drivers here. Alexander Jakobsen has lost third place to Limburg. Sad we can't get a replay of that. Unfortunately, we missed that. But... Lindbergh gets himself onto the podium. A very good comeback here from Lindbergh. The disappointing qualifying session, eighth for him, up to third in the race. Jakobsen, he'd still be pleased with fourth. It would be his best result of the season so far. Eamon Hakim starts his final lap here. And the gap hasn't got hugely bigger between him and Lee Horn. But he is content. You can clearly see that. As in the pit, serving his slow down penalty is Rayhan. He'll drop down the order. And he might be able to rejoin the, tr uh, to the race not in last place, which is going to be decent for him. Let's see where Pet Nystrom is. Rayhan will leave the track. Pedersen, uh, sorry, Pet Nystrom will go by. And Roy Plummer might also. Roy Plummer finds the inside, so that's down to 16th for our newcomer tonight. He might be able to get up a few positions before the race is done, though. It's getting a bit closer for a few pairings at the front here. Currently holding reverse grid pole position is Oli Anson in the 1-1-1 Lincoln Co. Driven by Andy Prio in the 2019 WTCR season. No moves just yet from Navalov to try and take fifth place from Jürgen Matsby Pedersen. Pedersen taking a bit of a wider line through the corner there. Pedersen was much cleaner through the corner there. Pedersen's had to result to defending the inside, going into the Variante Alta, and a bit of contact between the two drivers there. And that definitely put Navalov a bit out of shape, and that might be it for his challenge for fifth place. But this guy, it's another lights to flag win for him get through this final corner which he does Eamon Akeem will take race win number five ten races we've had five wins for him another brilliant display from the Malaysian driver he brings home that Alfa Romeo for another victory Lee Horn in second place for him that's his fifth podium of the season Jonas Lienberg comes through for another podium for himself the top three in the championship also finished top three in the race but not in the same order Alexander Jakobsen in fourth place his best result of the season as has it been for Jürgen Matsby Pedersen a strong fifth place for him Heike Navalov takes sixth place with Alex Foyle had to fight hard but he got seventh place just ahead of reverse grid pole winner Oli Anson he'll start on the front row along with the Lincoln co-driver Alex Foyle alongside on the front row for race two Jeff Burke is missing out on reverse grid pole, as did Ian Deeney in 10th. But here are your provisional race results of race one. Eamon Akeem takes the win from Lee Horn from Jonas Lindbergh. And uh, if the last few races have been anything to go by, we might need to go for a quick break while the next race sets itself up. But we'll be back very shortly if we do have to go off air. But there are your race one results. We'll go through before race two starts in just a few moments time
We will be going for a quick break, but when we come back, we will resume with round four here at Imola. Don't go away. Welcome back to Imola, round four of the championship of the Crest Auto Sport Next Gen Racing Euro TCR League here on Race Room. We're about to get underway with race two of the night here at Imola. Race two is going to be another 15 minute race. But the grid will be based on the race one results with the top eight are reversed and we'll go through the grid very shortly but after this race finishing in 15 or so minutes time we are going for a quick break and we'll be back for the final race of the night the 25 minute race which will finish off the night drivers getting a little bit of a warm-up before things get underway for race two so here were the results of race one So, we'll run through the grid as it'll be. So, these are the race one results. The top eight reverse. So Oli Janssen will start on pole with Alex Fall in second. Heike Navalov will start third with Madsby Pedersen in fourth position. Fifth position will start 
Alexander Jakobsen. Sixth place will start Jonas Lindberg. Seventh will be Lee Horn with Eamon Akeem starting eighth. Ninth will start Jeff Perkis and tenth Ian Dini. Eleventh will start Eunice Carbid with Alex Ward in twelfth. Georgiadis in thirteenth with Nystrom in fourteenth. Roy Plummer starts fifteenth with Ben Payne sixteenth. 17th will go to Mark Arrowsmith and Gabriel Lopez Stein, 18th. Elliot House, 19th, and at the back of the grid, serving that drive through penalty at the end of the pre previous race, Ivan Raihan will start at the back. This is Crest Autosport TV on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube. Welcome from wherever you are watching around the world, on whatever medium, on pla whatever platform. Welcome to tonight's races. My name's Alex Everett, your commentator tonight. And we're about to get underway here. Ollie Anson starts on pole position with Alex Fall alongside him in second. Lights are red. Away we go. And it was a jump start from someone. I didn't quite catch who that was. Let me have a look on the replay what it was. Oh, I couldn't even see on the replay. But... Uh, Ollie Anson coming down towards Tamborello. Alex Fall has nipped his nose just ahead there as we come into the breaking zone. Ollie Anson gets back in front and a big, big collision there between the two Renaults. And Alex Fall has just about got himself back in front and it was a bit of a weird one there. Ollie Anson got into the corner in front, but a nudge from the rear has shoved him back to fifth now. Alex Fall retakes the lead. Pedersen takes second place with Jonas Lindbergh up from sixth place to third place. A brilliant start for him. Lee Horn right behind him as well. Which driver has dropped down? I can't quite work out who that is. But look at this. That is Lee Horn on the outside of Jonas Lindbergh through around Tozer and gets himself into third place. A brilliant start for Lee Horn here. Jurgen Masby Pedersen, another good start for him. Finished fifth in race one, up two places so far. Back there, Oli Anson, who started pole. He'll feel a bit hard done by. I think he had some sort of a nudge from the rear. And that sent him back in the pecking order. And back there we've got two alphas going nose to tail. That is Navalov against his teammate Ian Dini and Alex Ward who ended up finishing 12th in race one. Having spun on the first, uh, went off into the gravel trap in the first lap. So a good comeback for him. He might be on for a good result here. Is look at this, Mark Arrowsmith up the inside. And look at that, Arrowsmith who finished 19th in race uh, no, 18th in race uh, race one. He's up to 11th already. Brilliant start from him. Alex Foyle leads the way. Coming through the Rivatsa now. Pedersen going very wide through the second corner there of the Rivatsa. And he'll be under threat from Lee Horn. Ah, chase cam. <laughs> Bit of slipstream for Lee Horn. It's helping him along ever so slightly. Probably not quite enough. Pedersen comes to the outside. Is that the right thing to do? He's leaving the inside open to Lee Horn. But look at this. Pedersen going side by side with Alex Fall. And a bit of <laughs> door banging. He gets himself ahead and into the lead goes Jürgen Matsby Pedersen. I don't think I've ever said that. And it's a privilege to say it for the first time. He leads this race. He hasn't led the lap. But he leads the race at the moment. Through Villeneuve he goes. Foyle looking for places to get back around. He looks to the outside. The Linker Co on the left trying to get round. Can't quite make it. And he's going to leave the inside a little vulnerable to Lee Horn behind him. Jonas Lienberg also looking. Eamon Akeem's already up to fifth place. Our race one winner. He's bringing Jeff Perkis along with him. who started ninth. So Jeff Perkis a good second race here so far after the mediocre race to uh, right one has got to be said and Alex Ford trying the inside of Pedersen closes the door still trying to hang on to the inside can't quite get his nose alongside enough of the Renault now Jürgen Mansby Pedersen despite you know he hasn't run up the front all that often but you do get involved in a battle with him, he will give you a good running for it. You will not let the positions go so easy. And that's what we've seen so far in these first two laps. Alex Ford dropped back a little bit, running a bit slow through the Variante Alta, holding up Lee Horn, Jonas Lindbergh, and Eamon Akimu were the top three in race one. So he's got to get the grip between his teeth and go for it here to try and stay in front. He's got the advantage of carrying no ballast, as has Jurgen Mansby Pedersen. The three behind have quite a substantial amount of ballast. 
Jürgen Masby Pedersen leads for the first time ever a lap of the Crest Autosport Race Room Leagues. Jonas Lindberg looking to the inside of Lee Horn and it didn't quite work and he's lost momentum to Eamon Akeem. all over the rear of him is that Al uh, Alfa Romeo ah chase cam <laughs> not the move to make it up the inside going into Villeneuve he backs out of it does Eamon Akeem. he'll look both ways he'll try the inside going into Toza and he does make the inside bit of door banging there between the two drivers but a very very clean well executed move from Eamon Akeem there and Jonas Lindbergh could do nothing but try to turn into his side to stop him and it didn't quite work Akeem takes fourth place and he can now set his sights on the top three which is getting a bit close between Pedersen, Foyle and Lee Horn we have five different manufacturers in the top five a brilliant blend of colours and marks to set the battle here in this race And Alexander Jakobsen, who had a very good race one, has dropped well down the order to 16th. Something might have happened to him on the first turn. Shenanigans that we saw. That's Ben Payne on the inside of Georgiadis. Side by side through the Variante Outer. Not the most ideal place to go side by side. But they come out the corner still side by side and still running on the track. And Jakobsen looking everywhere to try and get past. Oh, and a big swipe at the side on Payne from Georgiadis Ben Payne looks like he's getting good momentum but no he has to drop back behind the Alpha gets a little bit of an undercut and gets by Georgiadis losing a lot of time to Nystrom and Jakobsen as well as a result of hitting the gravel ever so slightly on his right but back at the front Patterson needs, leads another lap here at Imola Now, reverse grid for race three is the top 15. So at the moment, Jakobsen is there. He's in a battle with Ben Payne, as we saw back there. Alex Foyle makes a mistake. And up the inside goes Lee Horn on Pedersen. Pedersen shuts the door. Foyle goes around the outside. And now it's a three wide coming out of Toza as we come up the hill now. Foyle has the best momentum and he does get in front. But it's still side by side between Lee Horn and Pedersen. No, it's not. Pedersen has got back in front of Lee Horn, but Foyle retakes first position here at Imola. And what looked like a mistake from Alex Foyle, he got very, very lucky, we've got to say, to move it round the outside and get back past Pedersen and Horn, who were battling amongst themselves on the inside of Toza. Coming up the hill, now it flattens out. Lee Horn has a bit of a gap on his right that you can see on Pedersen, but not enough to get past and through. And Lee Horn runs very wide coming out the Variante Outer. He might have got away with that without a slowdown. But yes, as we mentioned, 15th is reverse grid pole. And that is currently being held by Alexander Jakobsen, who did do remarkably well in race one. He's battling with Elliot House, who shuts the door on him. Oh, and there's something's happened here. Alex Falls dropping down. He might have run wide coming through the Revata there. He's dropping down. He's into fifth now behind the three that he was holding up for a few laps. Pedersen's back in the lead with a little bit of a gap ahead of Lee Horn, who has now got Eamon Akeem close to his rear to guard off from. He's also got Jonas Lienberg to worry about back there, who's looking to the outside of Eamon Akeem, not able to keep it on the outside. Alex Foyle's not going to give up though, he's going to try and get himself back up into the top positions here. The Renault still leads. The Audi follows, followed by the Alfa Romeo, followed by the Hyundai, followed by the Lincoln Co. And now the Audi of Jeff Perkis looks like he's going to join the party. He's done this most of the season, he's just been sitting behind the Battleese in front and just letting all the action unfold and he's inherited a few positions as, as a result it's a good way of picking up good good points in championships like these that's what he's been doing Pennison definitely not the quickest of this top five but he's still hanging on to the lead and it might be a battle of six in fact it pretty much is a battle of six now as Jeff Perkis joins in the train 
got Oli Janssen closing in. He was our pole position sitter at the start of this race. Down in seventh now. Into the Variante Alta. Lee Horn was either going defensive or was trying to take a look at Jürgen Madsby Pedersen's inside there. Stays in second for the moment. There's still a big battle going on for 15th back here. Jakobsen has got himself in front into 13th. Ben Payne has dropped to 15th and he's under pressure again from Georgiadis. And ben Payne might be able to stay in front as we come down to the Ravata. Yes, he will. And Petten Eastrem is going to be threatening these positions as well. Darren Ivan Rahan, for some reason, a long way behind. So a miserable night for him. What was looking like a pretty good night with his qualifying performance and his early race one performances. Lee Horn closing in on the Renault. Not close enough to make a move. It's very difficult to overtake in touring cars round Imola. You've got no DRS or anything like that to help you out. And they're relatively shortish straights. And they're corners that are not so easy to get the inside on. Because usually when there's a left-hander, there's a right-hander coming up next. And usually when there's a right-hander, there's a left-hander coming up next. Very difficult. When Eamon Akeem is going to take a big lunge. Oh, and Pettis... What happened there? Oh, there's a big glitch or something like that. It looked like Pedersen got hit by someone. But Eamon Akeem has moved to the inside of Lee Horn and got Parson through into second place. So Eamon Akeem charging up towards a second consecutive win here. He's got to get past Jürgen Madsby Pedersen, though. Who so far has been a rock up the front there. He's held off Foyle. And he's held off Horn. Can he hold off Akeem? Horn's not going to give up though. He knows his championship rival has got ahead of him. He's got another championship rival behind him in Jonas Lindbergh. He didn't drop too many points from the last race. Only dropping two points from Lee Horn and four points from Eamon Akeem. He's looking relatively the same here. At this end of the grid, all positions are separated by just two points. Got to take every little point, or a little two points that you can in this championship move through the Ravatsa Eamon Akeem hasn't quite closed in on Pedersen he's driving a stellar race so far three and a half minutes to go there's quite a few laps Pedersen has got to hang on to first place Eamon Akeem he's getting a big run on Pedersen down the straight here he'll move to the inside Heavy braking from the Alfa Romeo. And he moves into the lead. Perfectly executed move there from the Alfa Romeo driver. Eamon Hakim as he moves into the lead and is looking good to get himself a second consecutive win. Pedersen flashing his lights to let him know, I'm coming back at you, Eamon. Oh, and a bad corner there from Pedersen. Still had his eyes on his light, flash light button. And he's now back to defending from the cars behind of Lee Horn and Full and Eamon Akeem breaks away at the front there and that will really really unsettle the drivers back here from second down and Eamon Akeem is able to break away so easy Lee Horn and Alex Full side by side Foyle trying the inside not quite worked there the Piratello is a hard corner to take the inside of it's usually better on the outside Minerali, Lee Horn very late on the brakes there, just about gets it stopped in time. Lee Horn now defending from Alex Foyle, who's got himself back ahead of Lindbergh in the last lap or so. They're all taking very different lines through the Variante out of there. Lee Horn very much skipping across the curb, whereas Foyle is trying to drag his car around the curb. Foyle with much less ballast has got a much better run on Lee Horn. Coming around the Ravatsa. Eamon Akeem will start the final lap here. And he had to work hard for it from 8th to 1st, but he so far has done the job. Pedersen will get himself onto the podium for what will be his best results in the Crest Autosport Race Room Leagues if he can hold on to second here. Leon, another podium for him on the cards, but he's got Alex Foyle in his debut here today. To the championship, that is. And for some reason, Ben Payne is out of this race. 
really unfortunate for him. Hopefully he can rejoin us for race three. Give it another crack. We haven't mentioned many drivers down the lower end of the field. Naval of back there is caught up to this train. We've got Alex Ward in ninth place. Moved up from 12th. Ian Deeney in 10th. That's where he started. That's where he's finished at the moment. Mark Arrowsmith has had a brilliant race here. He's moved up a fair few positions. Just reminds me of where he finished. Uh, 17th, actually. And he's moved himself up to 11th. Brilliant racing from him so far today. Eunice Carbead is out of this race. A bad night for him, unfortunately. And hopefully he will join us for race three. Pedersen still hanging on to second place. He's got Horn hot on his heels. Into the very anti outer. This will be a very nervy corner for Pedersen. The most difficult corner on the track. And actually went through very, very well in comparison to Lee Horn. He got a slow down, which he'll have to serve before the end of the race. Probably serve them by breaking a bit earlier in the braking zone. He does break a lot to try and shake off that slowdown. And he is still trying to serve it, I can see. As we come out of the final corner, we skip to the front as Eamon Akeem takes a second win on the trot here at Imola. It's two for two for the Malaysian driver. And Pedersen will come across the line. He takes second place, his best result in the Crestor Sport Racing Room Leagues. Lee Horn with another podium and third place for him. Alex Fall takes fourth position and Jonas Lienberg fifth. Reverse grid pole at the moment is, and certainly looks like it, is going to Roy Plummer in the Lincoln Co. there. He'll start pole for race two with Georgiadis starting in second alongside. But your race winner was Eamon Akeem there. An interesting race. A couple of dramatic moments in that race. But the story so far has been all about that man in the Alfa Romeo. As I think they have. Yes, they have. They pulled over to look at the uh, chase cam. It's actually the only time I'd use this camera. Uh, the Ayrton Senna tribute on the side there. But we appropriately now switch to the results of this race. Eamon Akeem wins two from two. Jürgen Matthew Pedersen takes second with Lee Horn in third. Foyle takes fourth with Lindbergh in fifth. And reverse grid pole goes to Roy Plummer down in 15th with Georgiadis starting alongside. We're going to go for a quick break while the server sets up for race three. Don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back very soon with race three. For some reason, I can't click on uh, any of my windows, so <laughs> I'll just have to bear with it. Okay, there we go. I'm sorted now. We're going to go for a quick break, and we'll be back very soon.
Welcome back to Imola for round four of the Crest Auto Sport in alliance with Next Gen Racing Euro TCR Championship here on Race Room, featuring all four TCR categories that Race Room host. And the series proudly sponsored and affiliated with lovely stickers Power Max Racing, Track Racer, Fast Star, 603 Autosport, and Joyce Design. Tonight, as you know, if you've been watching this whole time, we are at Imola. The circuit of the Emilia Romagna in Italy. The Grand Prix layout today featuring the long front straight, the pit straight. Once had a chicane in the middle, uh, but now a very, very long straight and plenty of chicanes all around this circuit the Tamborello, the Villeneuve, and the Variante Alta. We are in round four of the championship. Round one started all them weeks ago at Portimao, followed by Aragon in Spain. Paul Ricard took place for round three, which was last week. And this week we're at Imola with one race to go. The 25 minute race starting very shortly. The Hungara ring was round five of the championship and round six was at the Autodron Moss circuit. Silverstone was round, it will be round seven of the championship. spa Frank jump round eight. Round 9 will be at the Zandvoort circuit in the Netherlands, followed by round 10, the Scandinavian Raceway, a.k.a. Anderstor. Red Bull Ring Spielberg will be round 11 of the championship, the penultimate round, but then the final round will be at the Hockenheim Ring in Germany. We have had qualifying. Race 1, 15 minutes, won by Eamon Akeem, and race 2, 15 minutes, won by Eamon Akeem. What will be in store for us in race three? Well, we have a reverse grid of the top 15. So the uh, top 15 finishers of race two are reversed to form the grid for this race, which will be 25 minutes long, so a bit longer for the tyres to last. And ballast does shift about, so your qualifying positions from earlier will decide what ballast you carry in this next race coming up. So here we go. So what we'll do is we'll remind ourselves of the ballast that the drives will carry into this next race. Eamon Akeem will carry 40 kilos of ballast. Lee Horn will carry 36 kilos of ballast. 32 kilos carried by Darren Ivan Rehan. 28 kilos carried by Alexander Jakobsen. 24 kilos carried by Ike Navalov. 20 kilos carried by Jürgen Mansby Pedersen. 16 kilos carried by Oli Janssen. 12 by Jonas Lindberg. 8 carried by Alex Foyle. And 4 carried by Ian Dini. So that will be the ballast for race 3 coming up. But the grid for race 3 will not be that. It will be this so the top 15 there will be reversed so Roy Plummer will start on ball position and following him second on the grid will be Anastasios Georgiadis third will start Petter Nystrom and alongside him will be Elliot House starting fifth will be Mark Arrowsmith who has been moving up the order throughout the night very very well indeed he'll start in fifth position with sixth starting Ian Dini seventh will start Alex Ward with eighth starting Ike Navalov Ninth will be Alec Oli Anson with 10th starting Jeff Perkis. Jonas Lindbergh will start 11th with Alex Foyle starting in 12th. 13th will start Lee Horn. 14th Jürgen Mads Pedersen. And 15th will be Eamon Aki. 16th will start Gabriel Lopez. 17th will start Alexander Jakobsen. Starting in 18th will be Ivan Rehan. Yunus Khabib will start in 19th. And 20th will be Ben Payne. So that will be the grid for race three starting up very, very shortly. It's been an interesting night. Not quite as uh, thrilling and packed with overtakes as Paul Ricard was. But still been a pretty good night. And we saw that man just then, Jürgen um, Madsby Pedersen, take his first podium, lead his first lap as well. The Crest Auto Sport Race Room Leagues. And this man here, Jonas Lindberg, has taken third and fifth so far tonight. And 
with his eyes set eyes in his mirrors as he starts this race ahead of championship rivals Lee Horn and Eamon Akeem. Eamon Akeem, who would have extended his championship lead tonight over uh, Jonas Lienberg by four, about 12 points so growing quite big that gap between the championship leader and second place it would be a 22 point gap coming into this race Lee Horn, who would have dropped six points, will now be 29 points behind Eamon Akeem and has not yet passed Jonas Lienberg for their second place in the championship. My math served me very well there. It's good when the points are only separated by two, uh, two points <laughs> for each position. Roy Plummer there, we're watching there. He will start on pole position for this race, having finished 15th in race two. So a big opportunity for him to get a good, good result out of this next race. And we're now into the gridding up process for what will be race three of round four of the Euro TCR Crest Auto Sport and Next Gen Racing TCR Championship. This is Crest Autosport TV, with you watching anywhere around the world on YouTube, Twitch or Facebook. Welcome along, my name is Alex Everett, your commentator tonight. And this is the 25-minute third race coming up in just a few seconds of time. 19 drivers, one of the drivers hasn't made it, and I think that's Ben Payne who hasn't made it to the session, unfortunately. So we have 19 drivers still going to go at it for the win. Roy Plummer starts on pole position. Anastasios Georgiadis alongside him. The lights are red. Away we go. A good start from Roy Plummer there. Much better than Georgiadis as he's holding up now. Elliot House in the black and yellow. Audi back there. And Petter Nystrom, who's going to move into second place for the moment, will come down into turn one. And on the grass a little bit there. Looked like it was Ian Dini. Coming to turn one now. Let's see if everyone gets through safe and sound. Elliot House in third place there. The top three here breaking away from Georgiadis there. Back there in fourth place. Let's keep an eye on the drivers at the back. Eamon Hakim has moved up one place. Not much movement from the grid so far. Come into Villeneuve now. A bit of a Constantina back there. Oh, and that looked like Petter Nystrom is dropping well back. Went onto the gravel. Oh, and there's a big spin back there. That's Eunice Carbide. And Alexander Jakobsen, a big collision between them, and they're both in the tyres, and the engine's not dead, but they're on the gravel, and it'll take them a while to get out of there. Not entirely sure what happened there. We didn't see the full grasp of what happened there, but they're struggling to get off the gravel there. Jakobsen looks like he's stuck, in fact. And it looks like he might reset to the pits. Not particularly happy he'll be, it seems he can't get away but Roy Plummer leads away at the front here Elliot House in second place oh, we've got Alex Ward there alongside Mark Arrowsmith battling intensely those two there and it's a very difficult track to overtake on so the drivers come up through the grid Eamon Akeem, although he's gained three places at the moment he's in front of Lee Horn again so Lee Horn needs to be in front of Eamon Akeem for his championship's sake he needs to be in front of him Jonas Lienberg has moved up a few places. He's in ninth at the moment, ahead of the two Lincoln co-drivers of Oli Anson and Alexander Foyle. But Roy Plummer leads the opening lap here at Imola. I think it's his first lap he's led in the Crest Autosport Race Room Leagues. Normally a next-gen racing competitor and driver, but now in the Crest Autosport Race Room Leagues. And he leads his first lap. Elliot House, who has led many a laps and won a few races. In fact, I was wrong last week about uh, saying he hasn't won a race in any of the leagues that I've been associated with. But Elliot House has won a f the odd race in Exiled Virtual Motorsports. He has a big opportunity here to get something out of race three here. Particularly as the faster drivers at the back were the drivers that have been the fastest all night below ninth. Jonas Lindberg ahead of them at the moment I'd say. Just come up the hill. Jeff Perk is looking both ways to try and get by Navalov and defend equally from 
Jonas Lindberg. They drop back a bit from the pack ahead. The top six breaking away a little bit from this pack. And from here, Elliot House gaining a bit on Roy Plummer. Elliot House will seize the opportunity here to try and get himself a win. But Roy Plummer will fight valiantly to try and get it. Anastasia Giordiade started second. He'll be looking to try and get that back. Alex Ward, who is a next-gen racing race winner. I believe he won the final race of the, uh, the Just Gone Season 20 Championship. Won the final race at Brands Hatch. And he won two races at Watkins Glen in the season before. I remember broadcasting that and getting very excited about that race. But it is the race two winner of last week who's alongside him, Ian Deeney, to move into fourth place here. And it looks like he'll probably get the move completed before Tamborello. Might he be able to move across into the racing line for the breaking zone? Yes, he does. Alex Ward nips back behind. Oh, and Elliot House messing up a little bit, going into Tamborello. And now Georgiades around the outside. Both in very similar liveries. And Georgiades moves back into second place. And will now set his sights on Roy Plummer ahead of him there. And a bit of a mistake there from Elliot House has dropped into third place. Now he's got to work doubly hard to get past Georgiadis and Plummer to, for any hope of a win. Georgiadis gaining a little bit on Roy Plummer here. Oh, and a big nudge off the rear from Elliot House coming out of Toza there. Back here we got Lee Horn dropping a few places. He's dropped to Oli Hansen. Has dropped the gap from Eamon Akeem. Bunched up a little bit ahead. Jeff Perk is sent up behind Jonas Lindbergh. So Jonas Lindbergh doing very well to move through the grid here. We've got Elliot House back up the inside and past. Georgiadis there going into the Aqua Minerali. Good move there from Elliot House on such a difficult corner to over take on. And Ian Deeney is now looking to get himself into the podium contention. And this will bunch up the field. This will enable the leaders of the previous races to catch up with this pack. What house runs wide coming out the outer there. And that's Alex Ward in the grey Cupra right behind Ian Dini and the multicoloured Alfa Romeo into the Ravazza. We've got Jonas Lindberg taking a look to the inside of Heinken Nabalov there. And that's Eamon Akeem, I think, on the inside. Yes, it is. Eamon Akeem on the inside of Alexander Foyle. But Foyle will have much better straight line speed than Eamon Akeem as he pulls away. Eamon Akeem is carrying the most weight of the field of 40 kilograms. That's, more, that's uh, less than half of me, unfortunately. And taking a look to the inside was Eamon Akeem. Back towards the front. Area House real close to Roy Plummer. Into Villeneuve. Area House will drive as smoothly as he can. Try and make the move at some point. Oh, and there's a move there from Ian Dini on the outside of Georgiadis. He went wide coming out of Villeneuve. And Ian Dini didn't take a very good line through the uh, toes of hairpin there. But in third place at the moment, will he be able to have the better line for... I always forget the, this name, the Piratella here. Oh, and Georgiadis backed off a bit. There's a big hit for the rear from Alex Ward. But down to fourth place goes Georgiadis. Ian Dini comes into third place. Jonas Lindbergh just watching all this unfold ahead of him. He'll be able to catch them up. He's broken away a little bit from Eamon Akeem, who's two places back. He's got Jeff Perkis between him and Eamon Akeem. That's his championship rival that he's got to worry about. Alex Ward on the inside of Georgiadis. Not a very good place to make a move and not in that way either. Just took a lunge up the inside and Georgiadis was able to cover it off. It was a bit squirrely on the rear end, rear end due to the contact, but he got away with it. Elliot House took a look. Coming down to the Ravatsa, but I'm not able to make that move just yet. He's all over the rear of that Lincoln Co. There it is ahead and it breaks away. Coming out of the Ravazza. And Ian Dini now closes in on this top two here. Ian Dini, who won race two at Paul Ricard a week ago. So he's got the winning fever now. And you'll see it ahead of him. The opportunity to go for it. 
got to make it quick though as when cars start battling on this circuit it really bunches up the field Lee Horn has come back remarkably in the last few laps he's got himself back up to 10th and near to Eamon Akeem. that's Eamon Akeem right ahead of him so a very good comeback from Lee Horn indeed Georgiadis with a slowdown. Oh, and look at that. Elliot House up the inside going into Toza there. Good move from Elliot House. He's pulled off a few of them today. Into the lead he goes. And Roy Plummer has now got to fight back. Roy Plummer looks to the inside. Elliot House trying to defend it. Roy Plummer's not able to break late enough to get up the inside. Dini might be able to try and undercut here on Roy Plummer. He'll have the inside for the Aquaminerali. Not the ideal place to be. But let's see how they fare oh he stays within the track limit very well done from Ian Dini but Roy Plummer shuts the door and they're still side by side brilliant battle from these two no they're not Ian Dini tucks back behind brilliant defending from Roy Plummer Eamon Akeem alongside Jeff Perkis and Lee Horn taking a lunge to Jeff Perkis not able to make it into 8th position goes Eamon Akeem on his comeback through the field Jonas Lienberg is charging towards a potential podium here. Ian Dini's dropped back a little bit from Roy Plummer. So he might have had to serve a slowdown or something like that. But coming through the Variante Alta, he has dropped off a lot from Roy Plummer. Elliot House is in the clear. He might be able to try and break away here. With 15 minutes to go, he's got a big task to stay ahead of the charging drivers behind. One of them is Jonas Lienberg, fifth place. He has gained the quickest and the most so far in this race. Started in 11th up to 5th. In fact, I think it's Eamon Akeem who's gained the most places. And over here, Georgiadis being taken by Vikir Navalov. Drops another place, does Georgiadis, and he might be about to lose another position too. Eamon Akeem, but back up here. This is Roy Plummer fighting back at Alex, uh, sorry, Elliot's house. Elliot House, who has not gone through the Tamborola all that quickly. I oh, want a big lunge there from Alex Ward as well. Uh, defending actually from uh, Jonas Lindberg. Leon trying to get through as quickly as he can. Try and keep up with his championship rival. He's got Alex Ford to battle with here. Real close contention between them. Lee Horn getting a little bit sideways. He has to evade to the runoff area. He'll have to slow a little bit, uh, slow down a little bit to serve the off-track penalty. And now Alex Ford runs wide. He'll get a slow down penalty. And now Lee Horn moves his way into ninth position. Ian Deeney alongside Roy Plummer. Plummer closing him off edging him towards the grass but they make it through safely well they both run very wide there that'll be slow down penalties to serve this is big opportunity time for Alex Ward Roy Plummer moves over to serve that penalty but Ian Deeney hasn't served his yet and he did pretty much the same thing experienced talent there as Ian Deeney knows how to get rid of those slow down penalties as Plummer now moves down the order into fifth place is now defending off from Eamon Akeem and Mike Navalov. So Lindbergh has got a chance to get himself onto the podium for what will be the second podium of the night. If he can stay there, he's got Alex Ward and Ian Deeney ahead. Alex Ward, who is an ex next gen racing race winner, Ian Deeney, who is a Crest Autosport Race Room Leagues race winner. And Lindbergh now making his move to third place. Door to door contact between the two. Good racing, and Lindbergh gets himself through into third place. Good move from him. A brilliant charge from him so far in this race. And not only that, in race one, he had a good charge through the field. Lindbergh will set his sights on Ian Deeney now. up the hill Ian Deeney was our driver of the day last week he's dropping back a little bit from Elliot House Elliot House would just want to get his head down with half the session gone half the session to go and he's got a 1.5 second lead he'd be happy with that Eamon came into sixth place went very wide going through the Aqua Minerali there he's under a little bit of pressure from Navalov now as a result of that mistake.
down the hill towards the Ravatsa now. Lindbergh, what's he going to do? I've said it once on a previous race. Lindbergh really does drive super well in that Hyundai. In the XTCR seasons that I've raced him with him, whenever he's been in that Hyundai, he's been a force to be reckoned with. He's driving in this season and it's like home to him. A brilliant, brilliant car underneath him. Eamon Akeem making a move on Roy Plummer. This will be for fifth place. And he's bringing along Ikea Navalov. What a bit of contact between the two. He's able to hang on and stay ahead. Alex Full and Blue Horn facing off against each other again still. Second to fourth, still real close as Eamon Akeem now gets himself into fifth place. He can work on catching this battle here. Jonas Lindbergh will know that will be what Eamon Akeem can do. And Ian Deeney runs off onto the gravel and that slows him down heavily. Jonas Lindbergh goes across the fence but a little too early as uh, qu rear quarter panel made contact with Ian Deeney's front bumper. Ian Deeney moves back in behind Jonas Lindbergh. But he's in second place nonetheless is Jonas Lindbergh. He can set his sights on Elliot House and prevent Eamon Akeem. What a hero Eamon Akeem will be if he could secure three wins in a row again as he done so at Aragon two weeks ago. It's within sights. He's only 3.7 seconds away from it. Big battle here. Four car battle for sixth place. Plummer ahead of them. Navalov next, then Full, then Lee Horn. Plummer goes through the outer first of them. Three retirements from this race. Jeff Perkis is another. Jakobsen and Carbead we saw coming together on the opening lap, but Jeff Perkis joins them in the pits as a retirement in this race. Oh, look at that. Ags4 getting very, very squeezy on the inside there on Navalov. Still trying to hang on to the inside, just leaving that nose on the inside of the Alfa Romeo. But Navalov hangs on to it. And it's a big battle here. Three wide, potentially. Lindbergh on the outside of Ian Dini. And Ian Dini's fighting back at Lindbergh to try and get second place back. And so far, he's doing okay. He's getting pushed along by Alex Ward here. Alex Ward now goes between the two as they go into Tamburello side by side. Oh, and Dini put onto the curb there. And Lindbergh retains the position of second place. Ward needs to serve a slowdown penalty. Mind you, it looked like the Ian Dini cut more of the corner as a result of the contact between him and Lindbergh. But while they're doing this, Elliot House is breaking away. He's now 2.4 seconds clear. Eamon Akeem is closing in a little bit. It's got to be said. Catching one thing, he's passing is another. He's got to get by Alex Ward. And that's Lee Horn at the inside of Navalov. And he's alongside Alex Full again. No longer as they've come up over the crest into the Piratella. Leon runs wide again on that corner. He's really struggling for understeer on that corner and now that'll move Navalov back into the position ahead which is eighth. Back down to ninth goes Lee Horn. This has been a better lap from Jonas Lindbergh. Closing in on Elliot House and breaking away from Ian Dini. Alex Ward is now going to be under pressure from Eamon Akeem. Oh, I love you, Chase Cam. <laughs> Eamon Akeem taking a look to the inside. Is he able to break late enough? Oh, not quite. Oh, and Alex Ward outbreaks himself as a result. He probably flinched a little bit. Seeing Eamon Akeem try his inside, and that sent him off onto the gravel. Either way, Eamon Akeem makes it into fourth place. He can now set his sights on that top three to hopefully get three podiums in a row for himself. Roy Plummer fighting back. Sixth place for him at the moment. He's on the inside of Alex Ward. It's Alex Foyle on the outside. Roy Plummer on the inside. Door-to-door -door contact. Oh, there's a bit of a lean from Roy Plummer on Alex Ward. But he makes it through into fifth place. And Alex Ward, whatever happened in the last few corners, well, he's dropped from a potential fourth third even to sixth at the moment and he's guarding off now from Alex Ball, Navalov and Lee Horn. Horn looking alongside Navalov, a bit of wheel to wheel contact, trying the outside, if he can pull this off it would be a brilliant move, he's staying side by side. 
edged as close as he can to the grass and he is on the grass again Navalov really not giving room and he's still on the grass and Lihorn trying to hang on to that gap Navalov just not giving him any room under the breaking zone there and he'll have to try another corner will Lihorn Jonas Lindberg has closed in considerably to Elliot House on this last lap or so he's nearly within a second Elliot House has got through 18 minutes of this 25 minute race nearly 19 minutes he's got through now is he able to hang on in front of Jonas Lindberg both really resilient drivers and Ian Deeney had a very good run oh, chase cam out of the Ravazza there we'll find the inside for Tam Tamarello potentially no he'll tuck back in behind Jonas Lindberg managed to break away through Tamarello they go this is Alex Ball on the outside of Navalov defending from him keeps the position keeps seventh place Roy Plummer he was our pole sitter he's doing very very well he has dropped a few positions yes but he's doing very very well in the top six battling with the big boys here oh and look at this this is Lee Horn on the outside of Navalov oh Navalov gets it sideways but Lee Horn was a far enough back to stay out of contact way Brown Toza, Leon will try the outside again. He's got Pedersen closing in on his rear. He must be wary of that. Max Ball real close to Roy Plummer. Oh, and a big hit of the rear. He broke a little earlier than he was expecting. That puts Roy Plummer off on off the track. Max Ball stays behind, rather gentlemanly. And look at this, Navalov, Leon. Oh, and Lee Horn had to turn over to guard the position from Pedersen. To the outer we go. Georgiard is biting back here in 11th, trying to break back into the top 10. He started second on the grid in this race. And has a slow down to serve going through the Variante Alta there. Eamon Akeem has got himself ahead of Ian Dini. It's literally just happened, so Ian Dini might have run wide going through the Ravatsa there. So Eamon Akeem, you've got to say, in the next two laps, he could well be a candidate for a win here. That'll be three on the trot. Now, now's the time to mention the Driver of the Day Award, which uh, I pick every night. And it is sponsored by Lovely Stickers, our lovely sponsor. And at the moment, there's two candidates for this driver of the day. One of them is Eamon Akeem for double win so far, and he's on the podium now. And the other one is Jonas Lindbergh. One of them drives is going to get it, and I got a feeling he's going to be the driver who gets the first position out of them two. First position being the one who finishes ahead of one another, is what I mean. Elliot House has two laps to hang on to this position, and Elliot House, very, very good defender in racing not in football battle back here oh three wide Navalov and Lehorn Lehorn tips uh, nips back behind the two going back up the hill and Navalov can't get alongside Alex Fall Lehorn trying the outside again he runs wide on that corner again we've got to rename that runoff strip the Lehorn runoff strip Leonis real close to Elliot House. In fact, was alongside him there. A little bit of contact between them. Eamon Akeem closing in. Jonas Leenberg trying a bit of an undercut. Coming out of the Variante out of there. Time's running out for Leenberg. He's got Eamon Akeem closing in. And he's now found his way alongside Elliot House. Gives him a bit of room as they come down towards the Ravatsa here. That is Eamon Akeem on the outside of Jonas Leenberg. And big contact there from Lindberg as it shoves Elliot House sideways. But they all keep themselves in position, keep themselves on track. Coming down this back straight, front straight now. I think there'll be two laps to go. I think they'll have enough to do two more laps. It's side by side between Leenberg and Eamon Akeem. 
They cross the line. Yep, there'll definitely be another lap after this one. So there's two more laps to go. Eamon Akeem is moving ever more past Jonas Leenberg. Elliot House move across to defend from Eamon Akeem. Leenberg has the inside and moves back ahead into second place. Oh, that was pretty intense battling from then. Lindberg had to break super late for Tamburello and get it absolutely right to stay ahead of Eamon Hakim there. Now Elliot House has the advantage over Lindberg in that Lindberg is trying to defend and make a move on it and he has. Oh and a big lunge from El Lindberg and he's not able to make it but that allows Eamon Hakim to get the undercut here. He really hooked it around the inside of the uh, Tozer hairpin there and was able to Get it alongside as we come into the Piratella. Oh, and the wheel to wheel contact between the two. They're side by side still. They'll go side by side going into Aqua Minerali. Lindbergh nips back in front. One minute to go. I'm pretty sure there'll be another lap to run after this one. Coming up towards the Variante Alta. Oh, and Lindbergh, something happened to him there. And now Eamon Akeem has found himself alongside. And he'll have the inside going into the Ratter, which you've got to say is the better line to be on. Going into these final two corners. And Elliot House has broken away a little bit. A couple of tents clear. Coming into the Ravatsa now. Both very late on the brakes. And Eamon Akeem gets back in front of Jonas Lindbergh. This is not over by any stretch of the imagination. Ian Dini has joined the battle as well. Elliot House is broken a little bit clear. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. It'll be another lap. Elliot House will do another lap. And Jonas Lindbergh is going to try and find the inside of Eamon Akeem. Akeem has to give room to let him on the inside there. He did have his nose alongside, but Eamon Akeem has got back in front. Oh, you've got to say that might have been one of the last opportunities for Lindbergh to do it. He's got to line up a very good couple of corners here to get himself into the position ahead. Elliot House leading this race. He might win his first ever Crest Autosport Race Room Leagues win. If he can keep himself. in that first place ahead of Eamon Akeem, who is really gaining up on the Audi on this part of the circuit Lindbergh dropping back a little bit Elliot House going to defend Elliot House is very good through Aqua Minerali there, but a good exit here from Eamon Akeem. He's going to find the inside of Elliot House going into the Variante Alta. This is a very difficult place to make a move, and he does. He gets it in front, and he stays in front. This That might have been the move for the win. That might have been the move for three wins on the trot for our driver of the day, Eamon Akeem. Our lovely stickers, driver of the day. Can he hang on to it? Elliot House, he'll go for it in this final corner. He big nudge up the rear. Eamon Akeem goes sideways. Is he able to keep it going? Yes, he is. He stays in the lead ahead of Jonas Lindbergh. Gets around the final corner. What a victory for that man. Three wins on the trot. Eamon Akeem wins race three here at Imola. And another three-peat. His second three-peat of the season. Fantastic driving from the Alfa Romeo driver there. Jonas Lindbergh, brilliant driving for him. But second place is what he can manage. Ian Dini sneaks third in the end. Elliot House, that do-or-dive move, gets fourth position. Alex Ward, fifth. Navalov comes through in sixth position. Jürgen Matsby Pedersen, seventh with Mark Arrowsmith. What a night for him. Brilliant night for him. Eighth place ahead of Lee Horn. A disappointing race for him with his championship rivals so far up the order. Alex Fall in 10th. Georgiadis in 11th. Janssen takes 12th. Rayan in 13th. A bad night for him. It was looking promising at the start, but I'm sure he'll bounce back another week. Roy Plummer takes 14th. Started pole position, and something happened to him later on in that race. Drops into 14th. Petter Nystrom in 15th. And Gabriel Lopez will be last of the runners to finish 16th. But driver of the day, the second three-peat of the season. Three wins on the trot tonight for Eamon Akeem. What a final lap that was from him. 
and he takes fastest lap as well as a consolation prize but there is our results of race three here Eamon Akeem taking the full 120 points tonight Jonas Lienberg with very very good battling tonight coming through the field he was a very close second in our drive of the day award sponsored by lovely stickers and Ian Dini another podium for him third place for him It's been an exceptional night here on Race Room here at Imola for the Crest Auto Sport in alliance with Next Gen Racing. Next week, we're moving on to round five of the championship, which will be at the Hungara Ring on the 15th, one week today of June. My name is Alex Everett. This has been the Crest Auto Sport Race Room Leagues in alliance with Next Gen Racing. We'll see you in one week's time at the Hungar Ring. Good night.